Welcome to the first of the many lectures on 7505 NSC Project Management. My name's Barry Sutherland and I'll be your lecturer throughout the course. You may have met me on other courses. I teach leadership in aviation and I teach aviation economics. And you're probably saying, well, why is he teaching project management? Well, there's a good reason, because all those three subjects dovetail together. You can't say that they are mutually exclusive. They have crossover points. And in leadership, we talk about change, and any change is often introduced via projects themselves. So the one thing you'll find in this course is it will contain items that will be of extreme interest to you. One of the questions I'll ask during the course is how many people want to be project managers? And very often, I get no people saying that they want to be a project manager at all. But the big thing is, you will do projects during your life, no matter what your job. For example, I might ask you, have you been a project manager in your life already? And you'll probably say no. And I'll then ask you, have you ever moved house? Have you ever organised a party? Have you ever organised some sporting event when you were at school? And if you say yes, you've been a project manager because it fits the definition of a project, as we'll see. So in this particular course, you will find that what you'll be covering, you will use in any job you use in life. And another example I give students is, if we look at when Qantas formed its alliance with Emirates, there were 24 separate projects that were conducted to help the two airlines align their processes and systems together. And so normal employees who may never have worked on projects before would have been involved in bringing about that change. So this lecture gives an introduction as to why project management. And what we're going to be doing is describing project management and its importance in aviation and aerospace. Aviation and aerospace have got special purposes in life. Safety is paramount in all of their activities. And so projects involved in aviation aerospace are often different from normal projects. And we'll see that throughout the course. We'll define the meaning of projects and their attributes. We'll describe the project management elements we'll be covering throughout the course as defined by the Project Management Book of Knowledge. We'll explain the developments in the project life cycle. And we'll be coming up against this life cycle as we work through it right throughout the course. We'll be listing and describing the determinants for project success because many of you may have read about projects in the news that have failed and some projects fail dismally but those that succeed get enormous publicity and that's what we're aiming for in life, successful projects. And this course is going to be talking about that. And finally we're going to be explaining the meaning and the importance of developing project management maturity. And you'll probably ask what's that? Well the one thing is Project management and that maturity is an important feature of aviation and aerospace projects. So let's start off. The study of project management itself. Project management is something we use in our everyday private lives without being aware of as it is I said. If you've ever moved a house, that is actually involves project management. It has a start time, it has a finish time, and there are a whole range of activities in between to bring about change. Some of you may aspire to become full-time project managers and hopefully by the end of the course I may have convinced some of you that it's a really good career stream to get to in life. But if you don't want to become a full-time project manager, you'll still use the skills in the jobs that you will do in life because every organisation is going through continual change to adapt to changes in its environment. And of course, to bring about change, we need projects. So that's where it's going to be important. We apply it in our private lives, as I said. Moving house, organising an event. Some of you may do projects on a temporary basis or as part of your current or future work. But whatever you do in life, project management is going to enhance your career success and also your private lives. So even if you eventually end up helping organise a son or a daughter's wedding, you will find project management will be a part of it. It saves a lot of money uh, compared to going out and hiring a wedding planner. Okay, most of all though, and this is the emphasis in this course, project management is a discipline that is rewarding to the wary but pitfalls to the unwary. And we'll study throughout the course 
the smart project managers, and we'll see the project managers that thought they were smart, but unfortunately entered some of the pitfalls through often no fault of their own, but simply because many projects are cutting edge and it's very difficult to execute them without having problems. So what's the definition of a project? And a project can range in aviation aerospace from building an airport to building a new aeroplane. So we say a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service. So in fact, in aviation economics, we talk about changing the service we provide to customers. That has to go through a project stage to make sure that the service is properly designed, people are trained up, and the service is provided with all the equipment it needs for execution. And that's a definition from the Project Management Book of Knowledge. The big thing is, projects are important in aviation. New aircraft types are developed as projects, for example, the Boeing 787 and the Airbus 350 are built originally as prototypes and once they go through the certification process and they've ironed out all the bugs and they've got the civil certification to fly, then they are turned into processes where they go onto the uh, production line for mass production as a commodity. So that is one of the big differences between a project and a process. The project is to actually develop the prototype. The process thereafter is taking the result of the project and then executing it. Very often, however, what we find is that projects and production still conduct activities using a variety of processes. So within projects themselves, we still have to have processes to guide the people, for example, in the design stage, in the testing stage, and so on. So the one thing is that we find that there's a little bit of interrelation there. Some of the project characteristics themselves, they're ad hoc endeavours with a clear life cycle. They're building blocks in the design and execution of organisational strategies. They're responsible for the newest and most improved products and services and organisational processes. And as we said, airlines are always going through the uh, process of change itself to make themselves better, to respond to changes in the market, to respond to changes in competitive strategies. And the important thing is they entail crossing functional and organisational boundaries. That is, no project is generally executed using just one skill set. There are a whole range of skill sets used. And we'll be taking a look at how this can be done to make sure that the project always stays on its chosen path and is executed successfully. And finally, projects are terminated on successful completion of the performance objectives. So here we have a whole range of different characteristics that tell us about how projects actually work. And so that first one, the ad hoc endeavours with a clear life cycle, what that's really telling us is no one project is ever the same as another. There might be certain similarities, but they are different. That is, developing one type of aircraft is still a lot different from developing another aircraft. Witness the difference between developing the Boeing 747 jumbo jet and the Boeing 787 Streamline. In some ways, the two are uh, quantum stages apart. So what are we going to be doing throughout this course? Well, again, we go back to the reference that's used in project management, the Project Management Book of Knowledge. And what we're going to be covering in this course are all the different elements that define successful projects. That is, we're going to have the project integration manage. That is, being able to integrate a whole range of different organisations and skill sets together, including outside subcontractors or joint venture partners working together. We're going to look at scope management, that is, defining what the actual work that, that is done in a project. We're going to be talking about time management. Every project is given a schedule where it has to meet a certain completion date. There's project cost management, and this involves being able to estimate correctly, knowing all the resources that are required and being able to integrate this all together so that we find out what our final budget is and then tracking that budget throughout. There's project quality management, making sure that we meet the customer's requirements and our work is accepted at the end. 
There's a human resource management side, and we'll be doing that. And we'll see, again, how some of the project subjects uh, interact with other subjects such as leadership. We'll have communication management, risk management. This is a big one in projects. One of the reasons that projects often go off the rails is because of poor risk management. And then there's a the procurement management. So all of the elements that we're studying throughout the course will interact with these different elements that are defined by the project management book of knowledge. Let's take a look at a project life cycle. First of all, we have the conceptualization, that is coming up with a new product or a new service that we believe is going to give us a competitive edge. For example, when Boeing was looking at the replacement, the next aircraft to come after the Boeing 777, they looked at the Sonic Cruiser, something that cruised just below the speed of sound. But after they developed the concept, the airline said, sorry, it burns too much fuel. We want something that's going to be fuel efficient, but has got the legs to be able to fly from point to point. And so they came up with the 787. So conceptualization, coming up with the idea as to what the project is actually going to give a potential customer in the future. The next one is the planning of the project, making sure that we look at every element that has to be done. We know exactly the amount of work that has to be done, what it's going to cost and when it's going to be done by. Then we have the execution stage. And this is a stage where, in fact, we start to see the number of uh, workforce hours increasing from conceptualization through planning, and now we get into the real work itself. And this is very often where projects discover some of the problems that they never anticipated. And we'll be taking a look at that as we go through the course. And then finally, there's a the termination. And we'll be looking at termination and showing sometimes projects are terminated when they have delivered the product and they are successful. But sometimes a project may be terminated simply because it didn't come up with a product of the right quality. And we'll be looking at examples such as the Royal Australian Navy's Sea Sprite helicopter project, which just didn't deliver the goods and it was cancelled by the government. Let's take a look at some of the project life cycle effects. We get the client interest, the level of enthusiasm and interest expressed by the customer. And we'll be showing how this changes across the project life cycle. The project state, the amount of corporate investment that's in a project itself. That is, how much is the organisation investing the money, both from the customer's end to buy this new product or service, and in the contractor's end to actually provide that new product or service. We're going to be looking at all the resources that are required in terms of the people, the technology required, and the financial uh, budget right over the project life cycle. The creativity. Very often projects are to create a product or service to solve a problem. And so it takes creativity to come up with what are all the ways that we could solve this problem, but what's the best way? And that's really important for us. And then finally, uncertainty. Uncertainty is something that faces every project, especially when projects go into the cutting edge, such as a Boeing 787 or an Airbus 350, which is using uh, carbon fibre composites to an extent that has never been used before in aviation. And we take a look at the degree of risk and the effects on the cost schedule and the technical performance of the project itself. We come up against a concept called a triple constraint. Whenever you talk to any project manager, what are they talking about? How are we going according to cost? That is, are we meeting our budget? How are we going according to schedule? That is, do we look like finishing at the right milestones on time and eventually finishing the project on schedule? And our performance, how are we going? Are we encountering any problems? Are we meeting the customer's specifications? And this is what we call the triple constraint. And of course, these three cross at a mutually exclusive part, which is really determining the success for the project itself. So our project manager is always juggling cost schedule and performance right throughout the project. And this is always one of the greatest acts that's required, especially when we get to complex projects, as we'll see towards the end of the course. And of course, very often we find that projects may just go on and on and on and simply someone finally says, look, we're just pouring money down the drain, let's kill it. 
as we can see in this cartoon here. We now come up against a concept called project management maturity generic model. Project management maturity is really an organization's readiness to be able to perform projects. For example, when you build a house, one of the biggest investments of your life, you're not going to go out to just any old builder and say, build me a house. You want to look at the builder and say, what's your record of performance? Do you have processes that define exactly how you do the house and how you manage problems when you come up against it? And of course, a house is a relatively simple project. Just imagine something like an aircraft where you're really investing billions and billions of dollars. So what we look at is that some organisations start off with low maturity. They basically develop their processes as they go along. There's no common language, little support. Very often this happens in organisations when they first start up. Then we get to moderate maturity where we define the practices, the training programs and the support. And then finally we get the high maturity, institutionalised. That is, right throughout the organisation, everyone sings to the same sheet of music. Everyone is trained to do their job. There are checks and balances to make sure that the processes are developed and work and are constantly evaluated and updated. That is, we have continuous improvement. And we'll be looking at the number of different models and the fact that organisations go for accreditation to actually get this. Because if they have this, this is often one of the requirements to be able to bid for a project in itself. So in summary, we talked about project management and how it relates particularly to aviation and aerospace. But the one thing that we know is project management, the same principles apply everywhere. We've defined the meaning of the projects and their attributes. We've described the different elements that make up a project in its entirety as defined by the Project Management Book of Knowledge. And we've looked at the project life cycle and we'll constantly revisit that throughout the course. We've looked at some of the determinants of both a project success, but especially <clears throat> the triple constraint, which is cost, schedule and performance. And we've explained the meaning and importance of developing project management maturity. Thank you.